It's a hot Sunday afternoon. I'm trying to wrap this tractor project up to get it out of here to make room for another one and figured uh, this was worth a video. On R's and Z's, they have these uh, filter shell style filters where they got a gasket on it and you have a filter that's submersed in there. Well, after years of people reefing on them, they drip. I think it's pretty hard to get a seal or a good gasket like this one I put together. Tightened it up, drove it around, got it hot a couple times as I was breaking in the new rings and everything. Everything was good. Got out in the field once, got it good and hot. And you guessed it, started dripping. Well, somebody made a solution for these that I didn't even know about. And after talking to two other Moline owners that didn't know it existed, I figured I'd do a video on it. They make a spin-on adapter. So I guess at one point they actually stopped making these filters all together and they were really hard to get. So right now what they have is a replacement. Are these with the sock on it. They got the through hole gasket. You can buy these at, St at Steiner for, they're expensive. I think they're like 37 bucks and they're a pain to get sealed. You can get this spin-on adapter that threads in the place of that tube for 21 bucks, And this adapts the face of that so that you can screw on like a Chevy truck style filter. This is the part number. 51061. There's actually a couple different variations of them. So just by switching to this adapter and one oil change, I'll have already saved 10 bucks versus that style. And I hope... I don't have a leak. And there's a couple variations of that. You can actually get another uh, filter that's long and it kind of mimics the actual length of the canister. I'll put up a uh, image of the part numbers and where to buy it. Actually part number 1794 is the one that'll closely duplicate the original canister. I have several parts tractors. So kind of convenient, I can actually show you, this is the actual oil filter assembly that bolts on the bottom. Your oil pump idle gear goes here, and your oil pump drive gear goes here, down from the top. It's the canister shell. Let's see how this thing fits. So here's the face that we're going to adapt. old style filter again the replacement one the only one I can find looks like this and they're almost $40 each it's that canister with the tube that goes in you just have a lock nut that holds it in place here's your ceiling surface it's no wonder you don't get the gasket perfectly right and then you know what happens over all the years if the thing drips a little bit. You don't take it apart and reseal it. You just crank it down harder until your washers are crushed out of shape and the canister's beat up. So this little $20 solution screws right in where that tube goes. And you have your new cheap Chevy spin-on filter. That's the same threads, and she seals right up on there. I know some of the people that want everything to be absolutely perfectly correct, which is usually me. I like to have everything original, don't like upgraded stuff, I kind of like it the way it was. But if you're going to use it, I'd rather play with them. You know, the tractor pull, plow days, and thrashing shows and stuff. Um, I think I'm going to run this route for a while and keep the canister as a backup. So I'm going to take the thing off, put it on, give it a run, see how it works. Gross. This is the break-in oil still from new rings, bearings, and some assembly lube.
pretty dirty. says to just put this finger tight or if you want put a little dab of Loctite on it but if you just spin it tight and then the filter tension will, should hold it in place. I like that. Cheap and easy. You can see the gasket surface is pretty much a perfect match for the flat on there. Okay, we're filled up with the cheapest oil O'Reilly's had, but it has American flag on the seal, so we're probably good to go. Honestly, though, the worst oil these days is probably better than the best back in 47. I rolled this back to a nice dry spot. Let's uh, fire it up and see if we have any leaks. So far, so good. I'm gonna take this thing for a little drive, but it's so windy, Mike wouldn't be able to pick anything up. I'll run it around a little bit, and give an update if one's needed, but I think this is a pretty cheap, nice solution for a tractor you're gonna use. It eliminates quite a few parts and makes the changes, the oil changes cheaper. I think it's funny that they got a bag of waste listed at number five here in the parts manual. I got an operator to check for oil leaks, do a couple little drives around, get her warmed up and see. She's never drove this tractor before. I'll take her nice and easy. Sorry, I was watching to make sure he didn't run into our septic tanks. <laughs> we'll get it rolled back in and see if the new filter's leaking. Check the oil and I'd say that's about the easiest uh, upgrade a guy can do. All right, I'm gonna leave you with a final things you should know if you're gonna work on it's old Molines with as far as the water pumps concerned. There's a couple things I didn't know but learned. First thing, when you take these water pumps apart to rebuild them, do not try to remove the front pulley off the drive that goes in. I didn't know that on the one I did and I got lucky and it came apart really good for the rebuild. I don't know how I got lucky, but if you're talking to somebody else, one of the other parts tractors I had, these pulleys, you can't buy replacements, and they have all the strength of a potato chip. This one already was broken, and I tried to remove it to salvage the shaft for it. I mean, you tried to pull it, you touch it, you drop it, it just breaks. And uh, as of right now, I don't know of anybody who remanufactures these. So, very careful. Do not drop it, you're probably done. 
I had no less than two parts tractors, so I had three total. And I literally used parts from all three of these things to make one good pump. I could make another good one, I think, with the parts left, but you start uncovering grease, you find freeze damage, different things like that. As far as I know, there's only two sources for the seals. So how these work is you have the housing that goes on the front. The shaft goes through. The impeller gets held in with a roll pin here. A lot of these leak around the front pulley. Like you'll see water slinging out. I did it when I threw this thing together and just put a pump in. We're on and it leaked. This is the type of seal they have. So it's like a two piece. Uh, they have a little spring with a piece of rubber on it. And then they have this, I don't know what this material is called, but that locks in, slides in on the shaft face, and then you put your impeller in, put your roll pin in, and that's what keeps water from traveling through. Well, the other thing you can't do when you have these apart, if you just replace the seal in it and you don't face that surface, it'll leak. I mean, it, supposedly if you had concentric wear, it's less likely to leak. But if you had radials, you're guaranteed to. This one's been faced. I had them just all machined, just skim cut. So you want a true surface, not a file, not like sand. You need to have it actually you know, machined across. ACO makes one of these still. Uh, they're quite expensive. I think they're like 65 bucks. Um, and supposedly they don't have the right material. They're not made out of the same stuff that they were back in the day. So the same place that makes the that uh, oil filter adapter, I'll put his information in there. The name's, guy's name's Charlie Byler. He's out in Pennsylvania. He knows a lot about marine stuff. He'll tell you about, you know, he's no problem talking to you. He sells the new ones, and I'll put a picture in because I've already installed it and put this thing together. And I couldn't find any other place to buy them. Steiner doesn't have them. None of the normal sources you Google, they're kind of gone. So he has that part, and it's roughly 30-some bucks. Um, the pump I put together had no problems. Didn't leak whatsoever. The other part out of these three is there's these baffles that go in there. Hole hole, pinhole. If you had a barn rescue, any of that stuff, you're, it's very likely that these are going to be arrested through. He also had these baffles, and again, I don't know any other place to buy them. And a brand new stamp baffle was like 15 bucks. So if you're working on these things, he's a good guy to know. The other part of it, you can buy gaskets piece by piece instead of just having to buy a whole set for 100 some bucks. So I just wanted to let anybody know that's working on this. Do not try to pull this pulley off the shaft. The odds are you're gonna break it. Some are stronger than others. I don't know what run or casting. The other part is if you're gonna take the time to rebuild one of these, true that surface up. Otherwise you're just gonna to have to take it apart again. So how they end up going as a finished piece So this gasket goes in. I'm just going to throw it together loose just for just to show. Then the impeller goes on, then the baffle goes in, and then it gets sandwiched like that. So, with things I wish I knew right away, I figured it out, you know, talking to people and doing some Googling, but it might save somebody a couple steps. Till next time.